everybody, I'm Nick, and in this video I want to talk about the brand new .NET 10 and C Sharp 14 release, and I want to recap all the features and everything that happened both in .NET 10 and C Sharp 14, a bit of Aspire, and because we had a week now for dust to settle, I want to see how people also reacted to it, is it what we wanted, and so on. So if you haven't caught up, or if you want my opinion on it, just keep watching and let's take a look at what we have here. I'm going to start with the .NET 10 release blog, and the massive thing is like not .NET 10 and C Sharp 14, but .NET 10 and Visual Studio 2026, because that was also released now, and I hear great things about it. I'm still very much a, a writer user, but quite honestly, I code so much with Cloud Code nowadays that the writer is just a debugging tool for me and a diff comparison tool. So I think IDs in many ways are becoming a bit obsolete and they will sort of be vehicles for AI to write the code. Uh, some people hate it, some people like it. I can personally see both the negatives and the positives of this. In a way, the craft of coding and the art of it is being lost. But if you can deliver more quality stuff faster, and I'm not saying AI is delivering quality stuff, but if it can be used for that, and remember, now it's the worst it will ever be, then maybe that's a good thing for the business. I don't know if it's a good thing about the software engineer because I am a bit worried about junior and mid-level engineers being hired. But that's the story for another video. If you want me to make that video, leave a comment down below and let me know. I'm going to skip C Sharp 14 because I want to go through all the features later just briefly to, to explain everything. There's also F Sharp 10 that was just released. Uh, all 15 developers that use F Sharp said they love it. So we're going to skip over that. Aspire is the big news here because Aspire is breaking off from the .NET versioning. It's no longer first .NET Aspire. It is just Aspire. And this is in an effort to make it be used by basically, well, every sort of developer, not just C Sharp developers. In fact, if you go to Aspire.dev, which is a new official website of Aspire, C Sharp in the listed languages is not even... Like, it's the last. They're trying to make a point. Like, I can imagine all the PMs in the room being like, because we're going to make it look like Aspire is not a .NET specific thing, we're going to put C Sharp and TypeScript, the languages we own at the end. And we kind of own Python as well because we, we have the guy hired. <laughs> it's basically that exact thing that happened in the room and people think that we're stupid enough to not realize that. But yeah, they want to make it a truly polyglot thing. And that's why now Aspire is Aspire 13. It is not .NET Aspire 10 or Aspire 10. Confusing? Yes, I get the point. This also makes me way less hopeful about any LTS or STS version on Aspire that will not break every patch version. So yeah, many improvements, of course. Many things were added. I'm, I'm not going to cover everything on Aspire. Maybe I'm going to make a dedicated video on it because I am running workshops on it all around the world. And... It keeps changing so much, I have to rewrite the material every single time. Now, interestingly enough, and in a, in a sort of a way that makes me happy, Aspire is over AI. And I don't think that this is um, by named order. So, okay, artificial intelligence, Aspire is at the, at the center of it. Multi-agent systems, you know the drill. I'm a bit fed up. Uh, Microsoft Agent Framework, massive new thing as well. They didn't even release the last thing fully. We keep trying to make it content on it. It keeps changing. Now they have this new thing that's like the final, final thing. I'm so tired of Microsoft's disorienting, shitty way of dealing with AI libraries. Like, guys, you get your shit together. This is not acceptable. Uh, we cannot really build things on top of whatever you guys are trying to do with all of these libraries. Then you have the usual. You have the Microsoft Extensions AI. You have MCP. They're going all in. And finally, we have ASP.NET Core, secure, high-performance uh, web apps and APIs. You should know, by the way, as you're reading this, there's two things in Microsoft that, that's the, like the most important thing. The first one is security. That's the most important thing. The next one is AI. So keep that in mind. That's why everything starts with secure and everything. And of course, they did have this sort of incident with the, the security vulnerability that was like a 9.9. .9. So of course, they would damage control and say secure and so on. Now, there's many improvements and I've seen many people uh, update .NET 10. In fact, I updated the entire DOM train stack in .NET 10. And I have noticed a bit of inconsistent behavior. In some cases, CPU usage is higher. However, throughput is better. 
So I don't know how and what they optimized, but it, there is clearly a performance improvement. It might come at some cost of um, resource usage. If you want to see a video on that, please let me know. But yeah, the entire Dome Train stack now is running in .NET 10. So very happy with that. However, there was a bit of an issue, and you might encounter this. Remember how, let me just go all the way up to the features. Remember how I mentioned in a previous video that the failed keyword would be a massive breaking change in C Sharp 14? Well, actually, this is the least worrying change in C Sharp 14. This one, the first class span of T conversions, are the biggest breaking change in .NET 10 and C Sharp 14, and most people don't even know about this. Because what happened here is they added span implicit conversions and things like int.parse, for example, and in general, string parsing. So if you're using something like Redis to get a Redis value that has an implicit conversion to a string, and then you convert that into an integer or something else, that entire code just breaks, like completely does not compile. You have to manually to string them or convert them because now it will default to this span of T. This is massive, massive, massive. I had to fix this in at least a hundred places in all of my code bases for Dome Train. It was not fun. It was weird. And yeah, even though we have the overload resolution priority attribute that sort of fixes that, if you know how to use it in your own code base, it doesn't look like Microsoft used it themselves. So everything resolved to the span version because it makes it more performant, but it just broke the code base. And I was like, what the hell is happening here? What did so fundamentally change that every time there's an int.parse, the code will just not work? Another massive change, by the way, you need to take care of is the Open API 3.1 support. It's basically a complete rewrite, even though it's uh, from 3 to 3.1 the fundamental system of how it works changed, so you will have to deal uh, with this as you're upgrading as well. I know I did. That entire thing broke, unfortunately. Um, you have the SSC, the, the service sent events, that's for mostly for AI, the strange responses you get, so you don't have to pull out a WebSocket or Signal R. MAUI exists. Um, what I do want to cover here is a couple of things. First, Visual Studio 2026 launched very fast, apparently, People love it. Let me know if you want me to take a look at this and compare it to Rider, because I haven't used Visual Studio in so long now that I actually don't know how good it is or might be. And in my experience, Rider has degraded in many ways, performance, features, and so on. So maybe it is time for a comparison. And maybe it's not even that. Maybe it's time we launched the Dome Train course on how to use Visual Studio. And in fact, by the way, our Black Friday sale is now live 40% on everything. If you get with code Black Friday 25 Dome Train Pro, you get to keep it for 40% forever. And all of our courses are available. You can just get them, apply code Black Friday 25 at checkout, 40% off yours to keep lifetime access. Then we have GitHub Copilot, which I don't care about it at all. If you do, that's fine. I'm a cloud code person myself. I've found out of my own testing, it's massively superior than GitHub Copilot. So I'm using that. C Sharp DevKit the usual SLNX support, which is great. Solution file was always a bit of a, the odd one out because everything had been upgraded, but that file. So now we have the XML version of the solution file. And then .NET 10 is an LTS. So LTS, long term support, three years. STS, standard term support, two years. Why can't we have everything three years? I don't know. Whatever. Now, in terms of features, we published a blog on Dom Train. I'm going to put it in the description in case you want to read it. We have all the features. I'm not going to cover all of them here, but I'm going to give you the, the gist of the most important ones. The field keyword is the biggest one. So now you can have, instead of having a backing field like this, if you want to add some custom behavior to your getter or your setter, you can just use the field keyword and this will be automatically used. This is good because you don't have to babysit an extra field now, so your code is cleaner. The downside is that this might break some code. If you have a football field named field, or if you have uh, a field of studying or a field of expertise, then this can break your code. So careful when you upgrade. Uh, extension blocks, we used to do extensions like this. 
Now we can just have an extension block like this. Not quite the original feature we had envisioned and hoped for, but pretty decent nonetheless. You can be static, non-static properties, methods, and so on. Then uh, null conditional assignments is another great one. If something is not null and you wanted to set it, but it was nullable, you had to write code like this. Now you can just say, if this is not null, set it. Otherwise, this line will just not be called. Very, very nice. And last but not least, we have the, the span of T usage of implicit conversions. Like I mentioned already, this will cause the most breaking changes in my experience. If you have something like this, this was my use case. If you have a Redis value because you got it from the cache and that value is a string that can be converted into an integer and you have something like this, this code would now break. This would not be valid C sharp, even though Redis value has an implicit conversion to a string, it will default to the span of characters, I think, or whatever it is. So you would have to say do string over here or cast it on something else. A bit weird, a bit worrying. It is what it is. Again, I'm going to put a link in the description with all of the features. You can go with examples and, and read through that as well at your own time. But I want to know from you, what do you think about this release? And is there something that Maybe you wish they should focus on .NET 11. Let me know in your comments and let me know as well which is your favorite C Sharp 14 and .NET 10 feature or thing. Well, that's all I had for you for this video. Thank you very much for watching. And as always, keep coding.